when a piano player sits in front of a piano, they have a certain amount of artistic license. When a chess player sits in front of a chessboard, they don't. The better you get, the more you find that you're just down to only moves. Have a look at his tactical pattern. Can you get the answer immediately? Have a look at his checkmate pattern. Can you get the answer immediately? Have a look at his slight opening mistake from black. Can you get the answer straight away? And have a look at his endgame. Can you find the right move immediately? And so one of the reasons elite players get four out of four very quickly is that they've just seen it all before. And so in this video, I'm going to show you a game that I lost against a 1700 on chess.com where it's not clear where I go wrong, but I do go wrong. And it's only really when you study with engine afterwards, you realize, aha, this is the only move you could have made to keep the game slightly in your favor. And is this something you could have thought about in a 10, 15 minute game? It's tough for a guy only three years into the game. It would be a big ask. And so the boring truth of chess improvement is that you're just going to have to memorize a ton. It is what it is. You're going to have to stack up tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of games, put this stuff in your head, and you will get better so let's get to it let's study it okay so here we go we're playing the world famous norwegian on chess.com rated 1751 they open up with e4 it's best by test according to bobby fisher we have b6 b6 against everything i have a whole video about it go check it out i'll put a link to it somewhere on the video right now following lawrence trent's chessboard course d4 bishop b7 knight c3 defending the e4 pawn e6 getting ready to play bishop b4 putting more pressure on the e4 pawn knight f3 bishop b4 the e4 pawn is hanging bishop d3 defending it knight f6 attacking it twice queen e2 defending it twice d5 and i'm just blitzing out these moves because i've seen this in trent's course amazingly magnus carlson has played this line in a classical game i believe in the isle of man masters i'll put a link to it in the description below in that game i think you had e takes d5 queen takes d5 the queen is totally safe. The knight is pinned. The queen moves over to h5 and we just play chess. However, in this position, my opponent played this move bishop to g5. And for the sole reason that I didn't see this in the chessable course, I thought this has got to be wrong. This can't be right. It just feels wrong. And so whenever your opponent hasn't taken, you should probably think about taking yourself. And in this position, for some reason, I played this weak move bishop takes c3. That knight was going nowhere. I don't really know why I did that. B takes c3. D takes e4. Bishop takes e4. Bishop takes e4. And in this position, black is up a full please. So my opponent can obviously not play queen takes e4. Because then we have knight takes e4. Bishop takes d8. King takes d8. And we're just up a piece. So instead, white is forced to play this move. Bishop takes f6. And here, what can you do? G takes f6. If you play g takes f6, queen takes e4, you have these horrible pawns. Um, it's an interesting game. The king is in the center, probably has to stay in the center uh, with these light square weaknesses. And so I just played this move instinctively, queen takes f6. But after queen takes e4, I just felt, well, wow, this is wrong. I've got to be losing here. This is just, there's this horrible pressure here against the rook. And you're forced to play this awkward move c6. This knight jump to e5, which my opponent plays, is very natural. And here, it is safe to castle. Uh, this is not a free pawn. After knight takes c6, knight takes c6, queen takes c6, let's say rook c8, queen b7, rook takes c3. Black is looking dangerous here because there is a mate in two threat. And so my opponent obviously realizes this 15 10 rapid game, so they castle. And here, I think the engine just wants you to play queen f5. It's kind of a difficult move to find, counterintuitive for human players. And I start just playing, you know, weak moves, queen to e7, operating here on the first three rows. And whenever you do that, you can sort of bet your life that you're losing. We have a4, queen c7, rook e1, knight to d7. And here, the c6 pawn is definitely now just up for grabs. After queen takes c6, queen takes c6, knight takes c6, there's no time to play rook c8 because knight to e7 check wins the rook. And so we'll go over some moves here. Knight f6, c4, king shuffles across, a5, rook to c8, knight to e5, king moves back to g8. Quite amusing. Whenever you do maneuvers like that in chess, you can sort of bet your life you're losing. We have a takes b6, a takes b6, rook takes a8, rook takes a8, f3, rook a2, trying to get some counterplay going. Put a rook on the second rank here. My opponent coolly plays this move, rook to b1, 
disregarding this pawn here on c2. Rook takes c2, rook takes b6, and then this very poor move here from me where I basically activate the white king. Perhaps a better idea here would have been to maneuver the rook and try to create some threats. But after you deal with the checkmate threats, white can just shut that down by playing this move g4. And so after rook c1 check, I won't go through all the details. Let's fast forward some moves. We tried to create some checkmate threats here, but obviously you're just definitely losing. And my opponent coolly promotes their c pawn. And so it was in this position that obviously I have to resign. My opponent's not going to blow it from here. And so if you think about that game, like where does it really go wrong? I'm following title player lines to a high depth there so we get to this position here where bishop g5 is played and definitely the engine doesn't like that we have bishop takes c3 a little bit weak but not losing b takes c3 d takes e4 bishop takes e4 bishop takes e4 bishop takes f6 and you want to think about it was in this position that i had to find one move obviously g takes f6 is not the right move here but there is one other move i can play you're wondering, bishop takes f3, queen takes f3, queen d5, that's not the right way. The only move that I could have played in this position, well done if you worked out, try pause the video, is queen to d5. Okay, so let's turn on the lines here, let's see if it works. Do the lines work? No, it doesn't. Okay, it doesn't matter. Queen to d5 is the only move that you could play in this position. And now your pieces are advancing up the board. The material is equal it's like an important idea in chess you don't have to take you don't have to engage in a trade here queen to d5 is the good move and white is treading dangerous paths if they decide to play bishop takes g7 because after rook g8 bishop b4 e5 excuse me rook takes g2 this knight is hanging and there's all kinds of threats here along this diagonal the only move that keeps white going is c4 let's say takes takes we're going into a lot of depth here, which probably a 1600 is not going to find. However, after king takes e2, the rook has to move out of the way, otherwise it's going to get trapped. You'll find that in this position, black is doing well. You go back to this position, 10-15 minute rapid game. After b takes e4, bishop takes e4, bishop takes f6. Can you expect somebody two, three years into the game to see a move like queen to d5? I think that's tough. Maybe in a classical game you could have worked it out. But it's a tough move to find. I think it's just one of these things that you have to internalize. And so if you're blundering, if you're not making progress in chess, try not to worry too much, guys. Chess is tons of memorization. It's not all memorization, but it is tons. You're just going to have to stack up tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of games, internalize these ideas, analyze your games, so that the next time you see these type of things, you have the right move up your sleeve. Thank you very much for your time. Leave a comment below.